we go. What's up? What's up? How are you? I'm good. How are you, good. friend? So, it's so nice to see you. It's great to see you, as always. How are you, so, Jess? I'm good. So, guys, I just want to tell you that Ben and I go way back. Literally, I've known you, Ben, since I was 12 years old. Yeah. We went way to summer back. camp. Shout out to Camp Deconic. Many, 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 many years ago. It seems like lifetimes. But my kids are now um, there. I mean, they're, that's their, their place. Your kids go there? They, they, took a, they took a break, and then um, they're going back. Yeah. That's so awesome. Do you know they that my were friend... Gonna go last, they were going to go last year, but then it got shut down with everything else, right. obviously. So. Right. COVID. What COVID. a bummer. Oh, Bummer. you know that my, my friend's kids, my friend from high school, Jen Geismar, her kids go there, but I don't know if they're, they're probably not the same year. I think I just saw Jen Blick Goodman, uh, our camp girlfriend, say hello. Hi, I Jen think... Blick Goodman. Hi, Jen. Um, We're having a so camp reunion here. Fantastic. Let's do it. Bring them all in. Um, I was something I was going to say. So this is crazy. My, uh, my wife's college roommate... Mm -hmm. Okay, because my wife was not a camp person at all. Okay. And I was like, my kids have got to go to camp. And she was like, I don't know, it's so far away. And I'm like, you don't understand, you don't understand what this camp did. Right. Um, so just randomly, my wife went to Arizona and her roommate lives in Scarsdale. Uh -huh. And her kids go there or went there. Now they're in college. One of them is my oldest's age, and I think was waffling on whether or not, because she'll be in LIT, which is, I think we were non-bunk staff if we came back. Um, did you go back? Our... Did you go back? Did you ever go yeah. back? Yeah. You did? Yeah, I went back, and yeah. I, was a wa I was a water ski bum. I got to drive the boat, and before I had a license. Oh my Crazy. gosh, that is right. I know, right? That. That's I think wild. these are a little different right now. Yeah. Um, but, and Not then I went- Teenagers' I, boats. I also went back after my senior year of high school. I mm -hmm. thought I had to go to summer school to complete this one requirement. And I talked to someone at UCSB where I went to college and they're like, you don't need to do that. You're in, you're good. I was like, peace out. I went back for- <laughs> six weeks or something and then i was like i i think i've i've had enough yeah you know, that was old was, right time. right greatest camp ever so i was there from like 12 to 15 16 however old you could be you were you there for the same amount of time like i went for four so years. i started in 1981 i was nine in the tens hi linda linda rebel is here our camp hi friend. linda oh my god this is crazy like your whole bunk was it jake JC6. JC6. Six. JC6. Yeah, six. Right. Yep. So yep. my daughter ended up being in that bunk when she was in the 13s or something, or 12s no, or 13s. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then in visiting day, we were we were in that bunk. I was like, oh my God, this is nuts. Um, but uh, wait, I was going to say something, you know, I forgot. Uh, yeah, so, so there's like a program for kids who have already you know, their camper time is over and it's LIT. So they, my daughter will, my older daughter will have time off, days off and oh, cool. it's going to be amazing. And they're really working hard to make sure that the, the kids get that last year that they missed um, last year. So that she was going to be a, fifth, you know, a teen, I guess is what they call the last right. the 15s. And uh yeah, I mean, that's why we're here, right? Isn't that that's where why it all started? That's why we're here. Acting. Because it, Yes, we started acting. I mean, I did, we were, you were a year ahead of me in camp. But that's where, I mean, oh, whoa. I think it's the headphones. Hi, Jen. Jen camp hair don't care, Jen. Love you. Um, yeah, that's better. Wait, can maybe you hear if me? I put these on. I can hear you. I'm gonna, but, B, but you, did, did, you, did, you did the shows. You, I remember. Oh, now I hear myself. Oh, you were in working, right? You were in working. Adam Beck directed. Yes. I yes. remember that. It made an impression right. on me. You were very good. Um, so oh, you did the shows in camp. I did the show. What? 
Yes, I was a, I said, please, th and then thank you. But I mean, you know, it was, a, but that's literally, I had never been on stage. I didn't, I mean, camps back East, you know, there, there's like a million different activities you can take and, you know, they take their theater seriously. And Ooh. I didn't do anything when I was in the tens, but when I was in the elevens, the first thing I ever did was Bye Bye Birdie. Fine. And I got to play Conrad Birdie. Cool. And I walked out, they slicked my hair back and I walked out and I just heard everyone go, ooh, cause I looked different. I was wearing sunglasses, playing a rock star, kind of right. like an elvis -y character, if you don't know the, right. the show. And I was like, whoa. There's all these people staring at me and they're happy and I didn't even do anything yet. Um, and I was hooked. It, that was, that was hooked. it for you. It's, it Absolutely. started at Camp Deconic. 100%. And, and then did you continue like d doing shows at school back in uh, California where you're from? Yeah, so I was, I was sort of trapped somewhere between an athlete and a drama kid. And I think I, I think I really wanted to be like a great football player. That mm -hmm. was my dream, but I did not like, I played quarterback and I did not like getting hit and I got hit a lot because we didn't, you know, we were no, in Beverly Hills where I grew up, we didn't have any like peewee leagues or, or, um, you know, tackle football leagues, Pop Warner is what they call it. So when that first year, when we were freshmen, we didn't know how to play. We were playing against schools who had been playing right. forever. And I was just like, oh, my God, I got crushed. And then I played a couple more years. I played varsity. And then I was having so much more fun in the drama department. I think I was, like, avoiding that for some reason, not just, like, giving over to that reality that this is really – what I like. And right. um, so once I, I left sports, I played, I played volleyball and baseball. Um, and I fully committed to drama by my the end of my junior year. What did we do? We did uh, uh, JB Bigley. What's the you know, what's the Oh, uh, how to succeed? How to succeed? Yes. With that. Right. Yes. So Love that was my first like, great role. And um, it was just it was just amazing. And the theater department at my high school was right. No joke. Yeah. And um, I was just really well trained and well taught. And, um, you know, did you get uh, your agent, your first agent, Ben? When did you get your first agent? I didn't get an agent until I graduated college. OK, so I was not allowed to work professionally and mm -hmm. I'm really eternally grateful to my parents for making that move. Yep. My parents because did the thing. That's so funny. Same. Yeah, I, I, well, I think it's important, and I tell this to young actors who ask me, how do I get to be famous? Right. Which is an annoying question because it's, because I think immediately you're in it for the wrong reason. Right. Have, you know, find your passion. And if it is on stage, um, do that. Mm -hmm. as much as you can, you know, find ways to just be in plays. And then by the time I got to college, let me turn my sound off. Though you probably can't hear it. Um, by the time I got to college, um, I was a bit burnt out. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because my senior year, I was working all the time. We did three plays, oh, yeah. two straight plays and one musical and I was and then we had some festivals and I was I was just worn out and I and I kind of figured you know what I think I, want, I would like to be a lawyer my dad was a lawyer and um I just thought I had I was always like they they used to call me the advocate for children's rights like I was just fighting you know the good fight and you know I was watching my dad and enjoy what he was doing and I fell asleep in my first law and society class at UC Santa Barbara, like <laughs> out, couldn't have been less interested. Like right. put me in front of a jury, tell me a little bit about it. And I right. It. right. But out of all this, all this other stuff, like the paperwork <laughs> and the torts uh, and I don't know, whatever it is. I was just yeah. like, yeah. So, um, 
my sophomore year, uh, I was I was riding by the drama department because so we were all on bikes because you right. know we were at the beach and it was great weather, and amazing, amazing place to go to school. So lucky. Um, yeah, I, I, I was at Michigan where it's freezing and you know uh, you never wanted uh, to go outside. Yeah, sure. Um, so different. You know, I was I I was a sophomore in high school when I found my brother's friend had gone to UCSB or was going and he was like, I live on the beach. I'm like, come again. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. I live on the beach. And I'm like, that's what I need. That's where I want to be. And uh, sure enough, my sophomore year of college, that's what ended up happening. So back to how I got back into acting. Um, there were senior uh, directing um, uh, students, you know, they were they were pursuing um, uh, a, a career as directors, either in mm -hmm. theater or I would imagine some went into film or television um, or neither. But um, there were they were doing one act plays, mm -hmm. and I rode my I just rode my bike in like to the theater area, and I was like, I'm gonna audition for that. That looks cool, and I got cast, and it was it was a great role. It was I was like we were it, it was mirrored after the uh, Czechoslovakian revolution, and um, it was called a fire in the basement. We were firemen, and we came in and, and we robbed the place. And oh, wow. uh, it was so, it just felt home. You know, the smell of this theater, like it, the, you can't describe it, right? So, yeah. and it was like, mm -hmm. I, would I would liken it to like a 99 seat. It was like a, an old, they called it the old little theater. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of tucked away. And, and they, uh, one of the people from the, the Bachelor of Fine Arts in acting um, came up to me and was like, would you like to be in our acting program and I was like seriously and she said you know we, we hold auditions but we've all seen your work now and we think that you would do well and huh. how could I say no you know right. the only catch was I was already a sophomore and all my friends were going to graduate in four years and this and it was a three-year program mm -hmm. so I actually finished two quarters after all my like brothers, you know, my, my, my family now, right. you know, right. Of. So um, that was just hard being there when they had all left. And, but I right. was doing shows and um, I got so between my uh, freshman and sophomore year of college, or no, was it freshman? Yeah, I actually think it was. It, it might have been between my sophomore and junior year, I auditioned for Say by the Bell. Because okay. my uncle was dating a casting director, um, Ellen Meyer, and she's now mm -hmm. a manager and she's amazing. I love her. And she was like, you know, my friend casts this show called Saved by the Bell. And, you know, they're looking for someone who I think you would be, you would fit really well. And I was like, I had never auditioned for, for film or TV. I'm like, is it different? What? I just did my thing. And I'll never forget, I was sitting with my sister Stacy and our, our phone rang back when no one had cell phones. Right, right. And uh, we were in our living room and I, I got the part. I mean, first audition, I mean, forget it. It's like the That's first so time cool. you go gambling and like, That's you win 10 grand, like, <laughs> yeah. forget it. I'm, I'm just hooked. So, uh, and, then I, and then I started the Bachelor of Fine Arts program that fall. So it was between my sophomore and junior years. And um, yeah. I was That's too running. cool. That I is did too not cool. get an agent though until I graduated college. Right. And was that hard for you or was it easy for you to get an agent? How did you well, wind up? So I have, you know, I'm from LA. I'm, you know, right. born, born and raised and right. um, I'm pretty well, I mean, connect my, my uncle particularly yeah. is like knows everybody. And I remember we sat down and we just went through his Rolodex and we had like a list of all these people who are in the business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met with a few of them and I took a few acting classes. And then my dad connected me to a friend of his who was a, an entertainment attorney and said he had a manager uh, client and uh, would I be interested in meeting a manager? I didn't know anything about managers. I didn't, I knew that I needed an agent, but I didn't know exactly like how it was all it would all work 
Right. So I, I brought my guitar. She's like, you know, bring, bring anything, you know, you can to like, you know, a monologue or something. So I think right. I did a, a monologue and I played the guitar and sang. And um, i never forget the guy who was Marty Lickey, who ran the, um, the management company said, how do you feel about belting, Ben? Can you belt? I'm like, belt? Like, really? no, really get it out there. Can you get it out there? Can you really, can you project and sing something? I don't know. So I probably sang like a Grease song or something. I ended right. up, I ended up uh, wor working with his associate who got me into commercials, really. That's how, I never thought that I would do commercials. I was, I just was never. I You've done know, a ton of them. I, I used to see you all the time. Up. Right. Um, yeah, no, it but was, it's a godsend. Great way to make a living, right? When you're uh, an actor. It was unbelievable. I mean, Amazing. I, yeah. and I also got to travel. I went, I was in Vancouver. I went to South Africa, uh, which oh, wow. was just wild. Um, wow, that's I, very cool. Yeah, and I went with uh, two guys that I was shooting a, um, a planters campaign with, and we just had the time of our lives. We, got, we each got apartments in Cape Town. I mean, oh my gosh. you know, I'm talking, I was 26, seven at the right. time. And yeah, I was making a, a great deal of money for a kid that age. And it's very different now. Com it's so different, yeah. The commercial business is, yes. obviously people shoot their own stuff and, you know, right. our union is strong. Um, right. And, you know, I encourage any actor to, to really, you know, aim for getting into the union right away because we're really well protected and looked after, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you can't do stuff that's not, in the union, you're going to get in big trouble. So they're shooting lots of commercials. I have a friend who, who actually kind of uh, runs a media company, my friend Steve, or, or works uh, as a partner at this company. And uh, they do stuff like that, you know, branding. And it's just very, very different. And yeah. if you get a national commercial, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to run Right. Beyond right. one quarter or whatever. It's just, right. you can't, but you can't bank on it. Right. You used way. to be able to make a real good living yeah. you know, just doing commercials. Yeah. Now you can get yeah. lucky here or there with a national, but it's not like it was back in that, in that time exactly. when you were, you know, yeah. coming up. And Especially I would see you like, in the Beneful commercials, the Planters oh, right. commercials, a million commercials. Right. A million. So that's, yeah, I mean, it's a good way for actors to supplement their income and to get for sure. practical experience working on a set. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, and there was, you know, I remember feeling like there was some sort of stigma attached to commercials. Like, do I really right. want to like be yes. the commercial guy? And it was like, yeah, man, I will take just about any gig. Right. And I had great, I just had great representation um, commercially. Mm -hmm. And through that, I got um, agents that would send me out for, we call them theatrical agents, ironically. Right. Uh, right. But we never auditioned for theater out in LA, very right. rarely. Um, right. Uh, so, you know, for television and film. And then I slowly... Mm -hmm worked my way into the agency that I've been with for 20 years. Who are you with, Innovative? Innovative, yeah. Oh, cool. They're great. Yeah, they yeah, have my nice- My agent's name is David Letterman with a D. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like my brother. I mean, he's, they're great and, and they, you know, they take care of I me. Mean, my health hasn't always been great, which I'm sure a lot of people know about. Um, and yeah. they just have stood, stood by me and I, I was going to say stuck with me and, uh, right. there's real genuine, um, uh, love there. I mean, I, uh, couldn't imagine myself ever being represented by anyone else. Well, that's so and nice. they have a great, um, New York office. Yeah. They have a great office here I, in New York. I, I, I met with them and, and, um, man, I would love to do a play when my kids are in college. I would love to come to New York and do something yes. for i don't know like a summer or more you know that would be I amazing dreams of living in new york getting a place you know yeah come someday. come. i mean i'm not gonna here. move because i do love the weather here and so many all my people are here but uh, it would be really nice to to do work in new york and anytime i get a chance to work in new york it's like and it's been a while it's, it's right. awesome 
Pops is the best. So, so yeah, of course. I think but, you, you know the grass is always the last greener. That hired me. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's fifteen degrees here today, so uh, I'll, I'll trade with I you. Can show you what's going on here. Oh God, come on, that's not fair. You can't do that to me. I think that's it's not like cool. seventy-five. Oh. I love California. Listen, if me I could too. live there, I would do it in a heartbeat. But I'm you know, a Cal California boy. You are, there. you are. So let me ask you another question, Ben. Like, um, I know people want to know about Live and Maddie, right? Mm -hmm. it's a huge show, number one rated family sitcom on Disney. Um, so what was the audition process for like Live and Maddie? And then I want to talk to you about the aftermath of Live and Maddie a little bit. Sure. But tell me about. Tell me about Liv and Maddie, and hi, Lauren Showsteads, a.k.a. Lauren Dorf. Hi, Lauren. She's here, another camp friend. Hi, Lauren. Love you, Lauren. <laughs> hi, all my Taconic people. I love you. I miss you all. Yes. Oh, my God. Um, uh, I can't read anymore without glasses. Ben, tell me about Liv and Maddie. Tell me about the audition so process and the whole thing. completely honest with you. I mm -hmm. was not looking to be in a Disney show. Uh, it, nothing against Disney. It just wasn't something that I was planning on. I had done a David, a short lived yes. David Kelly show. And I had done. So people you know, know who that stars. is. Big Little Lies. Just so the people who may not know the undoing Big Little Lies. We had some students in the undoing the practice Boston legal, Ally McBeal, all these huge shows. The, yes. Know. Yes. Ally McBeal. Right. Um, and that was like, the bet it was the most incredible feeling ever to be on that show and to be basically handpicked by david um because oh, i auditioned cool. for him twice and um and then you know you get to a point when that job collapsed um uh, it was sort of like well you know you got to keep working so i was doing commercials and um it was really really hard to sort of like jump back into other stuff because you have all these these visions, right. delusions of grandeur, you know, right. it's, it's going to be the most amazing thing. And right. um, your life's going to change. And everyone was so right. happy for me. And it just ended. And that's life. I mean, that's this business. That's so yeah. uh, I actually remember having a conversation with my agent. And he was like, you know, uh, Disney has has their casting people have called and, you know, what are your feelings? And, and we just kind of mutually agreed that we were going to not do that. And then mm -hmm. this script came to me called Bits and Pieces. Okay. And it was hilarious. I mean, it was, it, it was as good or better than any sitcom I would see on network yeah. television. Yeah. So I was like, I love this. And it was basically a series of vignettes. They were, it was almost like Saturday Night Live meets... The Cosby Show meets a Disney show, okay. um, uh, and there so it was a blended family, Brady Bunch ish, and they only their idea was to just show and just do the funny stuff, the bits and pieces, right? Mm -hmm. But their audience couldn't quite figure out, you know, who was related to who, and our two families were together, and there were, and it was just unfortunately that show did not go, and it became. So we, we had a six month holding deal with them and I was not allowed to really do anything until they decided. And I was like, mm. just kind of, you know, sitting on my coattails, like, okay, what, what is happening here with this? And yeah, I wanted, um, I wanted bits and pieces to go, but I didn't hear anything. And mm -hmm. I remember running into one of our showrunners, John, or maybe it was both of them, John and John Beck and Ron Hart. They wrote um, bits and pieces, and I went to the Disney building for something. I was I was getting tickets to something, and uh, we're having been given tickets. And I said, "What's the deal?" This is probably like November. I was like, "What is the deal?" And they said, "Well, they have, as you know, till the end of December, and they don't know what they're doing yet." And I'm like, "Come on, they know. They have to know." And right. I mean, it was a great. It was a great show. He's like, "They really." don't know mm -hmm. and what i didn't know is that ron and john had written uh this show called live and maddie where dove cameron would play both roles mm -hmm. and i got a call you know two days or one day before my deal was to expire and they said 
they loved the actors. They loved your um, your camaraderie, but the show just didn't quite work. They want to do a twin <laughs> show. And I'm like, I, at that point, I was pot committed. I was like, of course. I mean, you know, right. I, of course I'll do it. I, are you right. kidding? You know, like I, I had already made sort of friends with the, the people. And, right. um, you know, it was like, you know, a show is a show. It's a hard thing yeah. to just it's not work. do. And yeah. it was ama- it was just an amazing experience. But I I remember I got cast. I was one of the first people to get cast at Whiffed Up. We got cast together, and oh, I think maybe Tenzing. And um, but they were really they couldn't find their his name was Sticky in <laughs> uh, Joey's role, and um, and then there was a role Cozy Zulsdorf who's awesome she was cast in it and then joey was cast um this is now we're going back to bits and pieces and you know this is an an amazing feeling i remember dove and i having a conversation i'll never forget it we were just sitting down waiting because we had already gotten the roles and we were chemistry reading with other actors to see you know, who was going to be cast and what. I think right. Tenzing, I think we did a chemistry read with Tenzing and he was just, it was so funny. And, you know, I could tell, like, they were just laughing so hard. And, mm-hmm. you know, you go into a really big conference room when you're testing, it's the mm-hmm. final phase you've signed. It's, it, it, it really messes with your, your mind because just before you go in, you know, your agents, your lawyer, whoever, um, works out your deal, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, the paper is warm. You're signing you know, pages of your contract before you go in and you're like, ah, how am I supposed to look? And I've got all these lines that, you know, are memorized at this point, you would mm-hmm. hope, even right. though, as I tell your students, always hold your sides with you to yeah. make the audience feel calmer and more secure. Mm-hmm. Um, and just in case you go up on a line and uh, which I did during rehearsals all the time. So um, I remember having this conversation with Dove and she said, she just felt like, she said, don't you feel like you just kind of like arrived? And <laughs> I was You're a lot older. more than twice her, her <laughs> right. age, you know, right. and I'm, you know, jaded. I'm like, I'm just really happy I got a job, right. you know, <laughs> and she was like, right, right. And her mom, I could see her mom go, right, right. And, um, and then we were cast and, you know, we did the bits and pieces thing. And I, but I'll never forget our first day of actual rehearsal on the stage for Liv and Maddie. So the mm-hmm. way that a multi-camera show works for anybody who uh, hasn't been around that is that you've got a live audience mm-hmm. and you're, and you're taping, <clears throat> you you tape a few scenes before so mm-hmm. that the night, of the shoot isn't so so heavily stacked. I think they used to shoot the whole thing in front of a studio audience, but they realized, right. okay, we can pull some laughs, sounds, and we can make that night just a little less hectic. Right. Uh, and then, you know, you lose your audience after several hours. Like, like the, the guy who's right. making everyone laugh is like, is throwing all these kids sugar and, you know, right. he's trying to keep them up and laughing and... <laughs> Did they hire professional laughers, Ben, on these shows sometimes? Yes, they did. People who come in. And it was the craziest thing I have ever seen. And you've got like 20 people and Uh they're sitting, and God bless them. um, Yeah. They're sitting, you know, in like a, like a, a, a rectangle formation, all in chairs, and they're watching a monitor and they're laughing Mm -hmm. so hard. Right at everything, they're getting paid to laugh. So they weird. are laughers. I mean, there is a there is a sitcom in there. I know Ricky yes. Gervais did extra, yes, but it's be... similar, right? Yes, it, that would be like amazing. You would walk by them and be like, oh my god! You need to write that. You need I to know, write that. I know. I think it's yeah, hysterical. Maybe I will. Yeah, my it, voice would hurt after all those hours of just forcing a and laugh were, you know what i mean they were so sweet they were they were they were the nicest people and were they genuinely laughing you think or were they just they just well, knew how to fake I it i think initially yes but when you start doing the same scene right 
10, 10 times. 15 times or whatever. <laughs> like, come on. It's now, not that we funny. Also anyway. had our, one of our showrunners, John Beck, has one of the greatest laughs of all time. And you could pro I could probably point him out on every episode because oh, wow. his laugh was so big and so powerful and contagious. And at right. some point, you're laughing. Sorry, John, but at John, because it's just unbelievable the <laughs> amount of sound that's coming out of this guy. And he and he loved his stuff. He, you know, he really loved his job. And, and right. you know, they're great at what they do. They wrote really funny stuff. Um, but I'll never forget our first rehearsal on stage. I was standing next to Kali Rocha, who played Karen, my wife. Mm -hmm. And it was literally the first day. And we watched of play Maddie first and then you know we had photo doubles Shelby uh, Wolford and Emmy Mattingly now is uh, her name um, and they were they would play the opposite right. role while Dove was playing basically against herself I mean that was the idea so it was very technically at first you're like how is this all going to happen but Dove right was on point like I have never seen. And I looked over at Kali and she just went like this. Like we're just <laughs> watching a star just right. ascend in front right. of our eyes. It was, it was just remarkable. And yeah. she was so consistent and good and worked so hard. Yeah, I mean, she had her it. moments where she just would need to like literally lie down Right. Walk, you know, between setups because she was must just, be exhausted. Was to go. Right. I mean, she had she she kicked some tail. I mean, there's no doubt she came prepared every to every single scene, every single day. And we did it differently. You know, our our uh, one of our executive produ producers and the guy who directed the show for the whole entire first season and many episodes thereafter we would meet at 7.30 before we would go onto the stage to rehearse just to read it. Yeah. And that's not normal. But right. the more times you read it, the better you receive it and muscle mm -hmm. memory. You just start to think about, you know, how it's going to work on the stage and, mm -hmm. and on the set. And um, that's one of the things I love most about working on a multi-camera show is that you do get just a little piece of that theater yes. experience. Yes. You know, it does like knowing that you've got a laugh coming up right. in two lines and playing it straight, just, yep. you know, and, and knowing that they're just going to crumble because mm -hmm. they have, because it's hilarious. It, it, there's nothing like it. I mean, right. you know, there's, there's that feedback from like the audience. It. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And I loved every time I got to do uh, or get to do multi camera shows. Once this pandemic is over, I uh -huh. will gladly get back to it. Um, You've been so, on some incredible shows. You've been on. Yeah, I've had a fortunate run. You really have been, you've been doing some great work. I mean, yeah. better things, you know, another comedy, but different, yeah. not filmed in mm -hmm. front of a Grey's Anatomy, you know, I mean, that's totally different. Mike and Molly, CSI, Scrubs, hysterical show. I love that show. ER, The King of Queens. I mean, Saved by the Bell, of course. These yeah. are some incredible credits. Um, amazing, gosh. amazing opportunities. And um, I was just, uh, I was away with some friends this weekend. We were all tested for COVID and cleared. And right. uh, there's a hotel that opened up in Ojai, reopened in Ojai that is amazing. And we just had a great few days together. And we were talking about um, just this one particular uh, show that I did called Six Feet Under, which, oh, uh, yeah. you know, the kids won't know about, but right. people our age will. And that was the kind of show back in the day that everyone watched live. Because yep. even though I think we, we had TiVo or whatever Sunday it was that was recording. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I tricked my wife. I came home, I got a call that I got the, the role on the way home. And um, I came in the house and she's like, well, and I was like, I, I didn't get it. Uh -uh. I, it just didn't work. And 
she was so visibly bummed and I knew I had her. And um, later on in the evening, I was like, oh, by the way, I was lying earlier. I got it. And she was like, ah, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. So what we decided to do, I think born out of that idea um, of surprising is to not tell a soul. And right. look, it wasn't like this ginormous role that it was like, you know, like three scenes or something. But I got to work with, you know, everyone right. or close to everyone. And uh, I, it, it, it mm. aired and my phone was just off the hook. Like, right. well, how could you not tell right. us? And, I mean, for, right. from my mom to my, all my friends. Oh my gosh, you're it good. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. And so I couldn't keep it. that secret. I could not yes, keep that secret. Could. So was yeah, that your favorite so onset experience, Ben? Or oh, would you say you had a different... That's what's, tough. That what's is your, so tough. Well, the um, David E. Kelly series, that must have been pretty awesome. That was, that whole experience was incredible. First of all, mm -hmm. the people that I worked with that were my castmates in that mm -hmm. show were incredible. Katie Strickland, Terry Polo, yeah. Michael oh, Landis, Chris Williams, okay. um, uh, Missy Do you keep Pyle. in touch with those guys? Do you, oh, wow, uh, really? Do Chris you keep in touch? Williams and I are tight. We're, okay. uh, brothers from another mother like he's he's but just a phenomenal guy and and you know look you know everyone else we have our lives and when you right. get a job right like that That's, it's right it's sort of like camp yeah like it feels like camp I, I, you're just you're having the best time and my god to work for a network it was fox and and um they were so accommodating and so generous and so and I was making more money than I had ever made in my life because that's how it works when you get a, a sure. you know, a show, a network show. And um, the potential was like, I was like, oh, my God, I could be working for seven years on this right. show. It was I loved it. It was it was really funny. It right. just didn't it didn't work. When we watched that first episode, they mm -hmm. changed it so much. Mm. I, they just overthought it. I think the executives or whomever just overthought right. it and it just kind right. of crashed and burned. But that experience was probably my best um, right. on television. Just most yeah. fun and just because of the possibilities. Of course. Um, but I've made so many friends and, and had so many wonderful experiences. When I did ER, mm -hmm. um, I think that was like, two years into my career I've, i'm now like 22 years in or so, i mean it's just wow. or more yeah. 25, so 25 years it's crazy um <laughs> but i brought my sister stacy hi stacy she'll see this at some point um to the set and mm -hmm. george Clo I, I worked with george clooney and anthony mm -hmm. edwards and um. i was just like i have a picture of it on my wall here wait well whatever you know what they look like um but, <laughs> but that's I, I super was, fun. I, I was like, oh my God. And I remember leaving the set, you know, when my, mm. when the day was over or my, my job was over. And I think I may have shed a tear. Like right. there are certain jobs that come your way that are so good and so pure. When I did psych, I, it was mm -hmm. in 2008 and I'll never forget this because it was right when the, um, the market was crashing. Uh, and there was only right. one room and that uh, we were shooting in Vancouver and there was one room that got internet for some reason oh, or got Wi-Fi. Okay. And all of us, uh, all, everyone who was on set, like you couldn't get Wi-Fi in your trailer. You couldn't get Wi-Fi on the stage. Everybody was around their computers watching their money right. just disappear. Right. And it was so scary, but it yeah. was so unifying. And I had so much fun on that show. We did, great locations we went to this place called white rock where you could see washington from across the bay i mean it was so oh, beautiful cool. i love the pacific northwest and vancouver awesome maybe my favorite city because it's got yeah. like a little bit of europe like paris yeah. feel but yeah. a little new yorky with all the buildings and different neighborhoods and but you it's know, a clean I, a clean version of new york <laughs> it's it, like it is there is a significant homeless Yes, there is. There. There is. Um, there is. But, uh, you know, and and our kids were young and, and it was a lot of work, you know, right. and I hate to say this, but I was a little kind of stoked to get 10 days in Vancouver. 
I would have liked to have brought Laura, but so right. I needed to tend to our children. Um, right. But uh, yeah, I remember on my days off, I went hiking up Grouse Mountain, which yes. I mean, it's just I did that. So yeah. you've been, you've been. Yes, I've yeah, been. Did Vancouver's you? It's incredible. Did you check out? It's awesome. Did you check out the um, orcas? Did you go on one of those trips? I didn't. I wish I had. Oh. I, I was. Uh, I, I didn't I have that many that. days off. I think out of the ten days I was there, you know, I had to report for wardrobe right away, and um, I was so. I was just. Everyone there on that show was so nice, and uh, I remember. We at my hotel is called the Sutton House, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which there's another name for it. Um, if you put an L after the S, because <laughs> everyone would kind of get together on that uh, in that hotel, the, all the single people. Um, so and everyone stays there. All the industry people who go to work there stay there. So um, I had my own apartment again, and it was just so um, I was ready to come home. I miss my family, but anyway. What what is it like then when star. what is it like when you're a when you're when you're a guest star on a show and they've already you know the, the cast is already bonded and they already have their relationships and you're only coming on question. for let's say an episode or two or three or you know how does that it's work great, and is that intimidating a, you know tell us about totally that totally intimidating and I'll tell you what um, you can really feel when the cast or the producers are making an effort to make everyone feel like it's a team. And right. first of all, you're going to do your best work if you feel like, feel included right. and feel like you're really a part of the creative process on set. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can, you know, out of the whatever, how many credits I have, I could probably say, you know, six of the guest stars I've done out of all those, I, I really felt like they made an effort because most of the time, and it's right. not their fault, but you know, they have a lot of work. There's a lot of, some of them are uh, uh, superstars. I remember this is a funny story. Right. So I did CSI Miami. Okay. And that was a show, you know, it's, it's, it's much harder um, when you're in town as opposed to being away because everyone got together um, what I was going to say is we played a game at the hotel called, oh my God, now I'm going to forget it. Um, it was like, uh, uh, you're trying to find the spy. I'll, I'll remember it. I'm sure after we're done, but <laughs> we, we all got together and, and because we were away for psych and, and they, they wanted everyone to feel like a part uh, right. of a whole, but right. you know, I was working with, um, uh, you know, the sunglasses guy. Who's that guy? David. Uh, David, the, David with or, the red hair. hair. With the okay, red hair. So, terrifying. Terrifying uh, guy. Right. Um, uh, that was I the reputation. Know, my brain cells are, it lives up exactly because I'll tell, actually, you know what? Why it was really he, nice. Okay. David. Why can't I remember his last name? He was I so famous. He was very famous. Either. Like, very famous. I can't famous. either. Okay, so oh, we know maybe, who he is. if you're David near a computer. The, um, I'll ah. tell the story. Anyway, um, so uh, he is notorious. Like, no, you better have your cell phone off. I heard a story that some oh. guest stars' cell phone went off, and he just said, "Can I have your cell phone?" And he, the guy, handed him his cell phone and just threw it at the wall, and it just oh exploded. God. So I was really excited to have the job. I had already worked on CSI, so here's CSI Miami, and. Um, I was, I reported for where, oh, we were shooting in Long Beach, okay? And so I live in the Hollywood Hills and that's that's an hour and 20 minutes in traffic, easy. And I was like, wow. you know, why don't I just stay in a hotel, like right. a Hyatt or something down there? And, uh, cause I wanted to be like, especially yeah. for him, um, I can't even, I, I, I have to get- Yeah, you need to look name. this up so, because it's driving me nuts. And we're both going to be like, David, something uh, with a C, something with a C. David, David Caru no, hold Caruso? on. Caruso? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. think so. Okay. Uh, let me just see here. Um, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, yes, David Caruso. David yes, Caruso. Exactly. You're right. This guy was super famous, everybody. Super. Right, right. And um, so I'm like early in wardrobe. 
memorized, ready to go, awesome. And it was a great role. I played a murderer, and just oh. it was just fan, it was fantastic. I got to cry. I got to. It was. I, I. It was. It was one of those just choice roles. Right. First morning, I'm in my trailer. I'm. I'm really hungry, and I. I got a breakfast burrito. I had already gone through the works, which is hair oh, no. and makeup and all that stuff. I did cardinal sin. I'm wearing my coat. I'm wearing oh. everything, and I just wanted a bite. So I took a um, bite of this burrito, and oil just went <laughs> straight onto my lapel, straight down. I'm like, <gasps> no, oh my god, no, no, no. <laughs> and of course, they didn't have doubles. You know, they right. didn't. They didn't have another coat for me. Right. And I and I brought it over to the wardrobe people, and I said, I am so, so <laughs> embarrassed and so sorry, but. Um, I'm going to rehearse right now. Is there a way that you can get this out? And the, I'll just never forget the looks on their faces because they're the ones that are going to take heat too. And right. they worked on that coat. So how it works with a single camera is you, because each setup is different. You're going to different locations. So you get onto set, which is wherever they are going to shoot their scene, like on the step. It was like on the steps of some building. Um, mm -hmm. office building and um, that they're doubling for Miami and Long Beach but anyway um, and then you rehearse and so you, you rehearse just with the director mm -hmm. and uh, and the actors I had my just my shirt and tie my coat was not on because mm -hmm. it was being worked on and uh, we finished rehearsal and and then you, you they bring in the crew to see how it's going to look and I'm all I can think about is damn coat right. and I get back to my trailer and the wardrobe guy is there and and he's like we couldn't get it out he said we just tried so hard so we're gonna we're gonna try to just pass it off and right. um you know like maybe I don't know what I don't know what they did or how it worked but oh, I definitely uh oh you froze uh oh did I freeze? You guys? Or did Ben freeze? Oh, you froze for a minute. You, you froze and I froze. Did I freeze? It was a double freeze. Somebody froze. Double so you were freeze, saying, yeah. so, so did you see um, it or did you not see it? Did they work their magic? I just put it on, put the coat on. I tried not, because I had work to do. And I had to get into character and I had to make sure that I was doing everything I needed to do. And we just pulled it off. They were amazing. Somehow, like they put like baking soda or whatever. I don't know. I mean, it was all, I would say like 85%, 80 to 85% gone. And it was like a brown sort of tweedy coat. Right. Um, somehow it worked out, but that's a cardinal sin. I mean, right. I just wanted to bite before rehearsal. So you know? hungry. Just, just like, yeah, yeah. And uh, I learned my lesson. Wow. And, and, and David, thank God, never threw my burrito at me. <laughs> yeah. he had oh my gosh. Burrito. I'm sure you have a lot of cool stories from, from your days on, on sets. Let me ask you another Absolutely. question. Going back mm -hmm. to your Lib and Maddie days for a second. So I know that this, I know you get recognized when you walk on the street because the show is huge and everybody knows that Sometimes. you're the dad. Very recognizable. Tell me about the, the pluses and the minuses of being recognizable. Tell me when so, you like it. You know, Tell me when you don't like it. What are the you know so, advantages and disadvantages? Well, it's interesting because you, you always, as an actor, you have an idea of what life is going to be like when you're recognizable or famous. Right. It's fame is a is not real. It doesn't feel real. Um, mm -hmm. When people come up to me, they don't know me. They know the character. Um, mm -hmm. I am honored. I honestly am honored every time someone asks to take a picture with me or say hello or whatever. Right. There are a few, there have been a few times where I have not wanted to only because, uh, look, I've got kids, you know, they're older now, but at the time they were, you know, they were seven and five. Right. And um, I, wanted to protect them and also protect the integrity of my relationship with my girls. I didn't want mm -hmm. them to ever feel like fans come first. They mm -hmm. always came first. Mm -hmm. um, and these are things that uh, I 
I really paid attention to early on um, mm -hmm. that there were sometimes like at the RDMAs, which is like the Disney big event, the Radio Disney Music Awards, and mm -hmm. they also give out awards for shows and stuff. And it's like their hype show. And we were mobbed. I mean, I, I left the theater a little bit early to get to the after party, which mm -hmm. was only actors from shows and their guests and, mm -hmm. you know, producers and production stuff. And we were sworn, like once one person takes a picture with you, right? people see it and right. they swarm. And, and they get the guts, I, right. I, 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 was, uh, I was terrified that one time um, that that's it. Um, I love, I've, I've really enjoyed every other time. And as a matter of fact, I can't even believe I'm telling you this. I have two quick stories to tell you about that, about yes. fame or whatever. Um, but I was, uh, every year I got to go to Disneyland on the Disney's dime. That's what happens when you work on a Disney show. Right. And I could take another family and we get a guide and, you know, it, it, it's just great. And super fun. Yeah. I could tell, I mean, you know, my kids call it, you were L and M, which means you were spotted, you know, um, and, and, uh, and you know, it's less and less now, but the show runs ad nauseum on right. Disney plus or whatever. Right. Um, but, um, uh, so, so, uh, the, the, that there was that swarming incident and then I had gone to Hawaii and it, we had just arrived. And when you go to Hawaii, it's three hours earlier. So right. your hotel is never, your room is never ready. Right. right. Um, and one of the two rooms was open um, and Laura was exhausted. And I said, honey, why don't you take a nap and I'll just take the kids down. I'll have a beer and I'll read my book and um, I'll be happy. Let the kids go on the water slides and all that stuff. It was just, right. it was a beautiful like a Hawaiian day, like just, uh, it's our favorite. Maui's our favorite place yeah. in the world. So beautiful. Um, I found my spot and I was just, I hopped into the pool and I had my Kindle and I had a beer and it was, it was just perfect. It was perfect. Yep. And I saw, and the kids were off and I saw this mom take her daughter's hand and like run and weave in between like the lounge chairs. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> Oh right. no. Oh God. Um, I'm like, you know, not the fittest and I've ever been in my life at that moment. And, um, you know, I could have used a few days in the sun, perhaps I was a little pasty white and she came over to me and she's like, can we get a picture? And I said, how, we, yeah. Okay. How, how do you want to do this? Like, I'm not going to get out of the pool. So, we worked it out and uh, I guess the, the kid kind of got on their knees and whatever. Uh, but that really, we're, we're that, that was the only time. Um, and then that one time where we were kind of like Torn, just yeah. almost eaten by a, a, a crowd of people. Um, but otherwise it's a, it's just a really neat feeling. And my kids, um, I think get, get a kick out of it. They got a real big kick out of it when they were younger and um one of the you know there are downsides to it um right you know like i was always concerned uh, our part do people want to be do kids want to be friends with my kids because they know right. that i'm the dad on that show that they oh. watch and when right. they were younger it was it was uh, it, it, i don't think it ever happened their friendships are organic and, and true right but you you know as a as a as a parent who's who's aware yeah you know you, it's a concern it it's it a concern you know right. and it's I'm real a warrior. i don't know if you remember that That's... but i tend to, tend to get a little what? like i'm a worrier like i right. i tend to stress like you know um and so but overall i would say eight or nine out of ten on being recognized for being in that show because also entertaining kids right putting smiles on kids faces right are you kidding me like, and by the way, their parents too. Their parents too, because yeah. it was you know it's always on, and the parents wind up. And I have to say something yeah. about Disney shows. Sometimes I'll watch Friends at night with my husband, and I'm like, mm -hmm. this is just basically Disney for adults. You know what I mean? Yep. It's your yep. show was really well written, really well yes. crafted, and yes. it could appeal to adults too. So 
you know, when you've I taught agree. for us over the years, people would say, yeah. well, I love him too, because, you know, I would watch the show when my daughter was right. watching the show or my son's watching right. it. So it, it really works on a lot of different levels too, you know? Yeah. No, and they were, you know, they, our writers were special. I mean, they were, our writer's room uh, consistently put out great, great stuff. And um, and and like even the the stuff that Kali wrote um, were some of my favorite episodes, you know. Right. Um, and I got to direct. Um, so right. as as adults, they they give you an opportunity to do something that you wouldn't normally get a chance to do to enhance the experience for you, so right. that that Disney job becomes a little bit more appealing. And um, right. she is a fantastic writer, and her partner, and just great writers, and. Um, I cool. chose the directing thing and they, they were very helpful. I think I, I would love another crack at it. Yeah, I was going to say. It'll happen. It'll happen at some point. I'm, I'm writing all the time and I'm working on a, on a film right now that I, Jesus, I would love to direct, but it's not a priority. We want to just sort of sell right. it and get on the board and see what happens. But I will direct right. again something. For that's sure. so awesome. That's great. So you had a crack at that because you were on the show. That's interesting. Yes. Um, so yes. tell me, what is your what is a memory from on set that you that sticks out in your memory? Is there one particular episode or one particular moment or day that really stands out in your memory? Yeah, I mean there are many, but um, uh, there was an an episode where um, uh, Liv was dressing up as a werewolf and. And she got um, super glue on her teeth and <laughs> on her hands, and like that's uh. kind of like the gag. Uh, and we, oh god, we did the first take, and it didn't like work out. But things got stuck together, and she looked at me, and I could tell like this was genuine terror. Like she was, yeah. and we just let you know the laughter that happens as an actor, uh, the giggles, it's so hard to get back and do it all the way through um, because it's just, you. that laughter is so, it's so special and it's so consistent and it's so fun. Right. And um, I'll just never forget Dove and I just absolutely cracking up. We couldn't get through the scene. I mean, we did. <laughs> Um, but, um, you know, those, those are the moments that I really cherish really on any job is, mm -hmm. is the, the, the bonding that the spontaneous bonding that mm -hmm. happens during rehearsals or the in, in between times I, I'm, we've become really good friends with Jordan Fisher. He's like, a, a oh, yeah. like a brother. Like a I'm trying to bring Jordan in. in, tell him to teach a masterclass. <laughs> I will, I will bring it up. Uh, he's a busy, busy guy, but I'm the kidding. first time I met him. I, well, yeah, you never know. Um, you never know. He and I sat down and talked for like three hours through lunch uh -huh. and our scenes were coming up later in the day and like, I'll never forget it. And I called Laura, my wife after I was like, I can't wait for you to meet this kid. He's amazing. Right. He's just amazing. He's, yeah. He reminds me of one of my nephews, you know, really sweet and, and super talented and kind and, um, you know, those Very are the kinds cool. of things that stay with you. Absolutely. So, so tell us, because I know you have a call soon, but I want to ask you, um, what is the most gratifying thing about being an actor? When I have an opportunity to, ha to get in front of people, whether it's an audition or whether it's the job, um, and I crush it. There's no better mm -hmm. feeling. Now, there are a million reasons why we don't get jobs and we don't yep. find out. But I will, on occasion, call my agent. It's not a good idea to call your agents after every single audition right. and find out, get some information. You just gotta yeah. kinda let it go. But yes. I actually, um, this what, like a few times I called and, and um, the, the the feedback was like you were perfect you were just too tall or they right. wanted like a brad pitt guy or right. they wanted a super character guy like i you know you fall through the cracks so gratifying getting jobs getting the phone yeah. call because the work 
to get the job, I feel like is the work. That's really mm -hmm. the work. Because like I said to you earlier, when once we're working, it feels like camp. It, it yeah. feels like it's, it's, it's all good. We're making money. We're doing what we love. Um, but there's nothing like getting a call that you got a job. Like that, yeah. that when I got the call about that David Kelly show, that was crazy. That's a whole other story. It, it, yeah. it ran in the trades before I actually got it. And my what? cousin was working at the Hollywood Reporter, and she's like, congratulations. I'm like, congratulations for what? She's like, you got the role. That's I'm like, so awesome. No, I haven't. I, I haven't gotten the call. <laughs> and I actually didn't get the job yet because they were trying to decide if they needed the role. David Kelly was mm -hmm. a little unsure if he could facilitate another. It was a large cast. We had like, uh, I'm just looking at the yeah. poster. We had like, you know, eight, seven uh, right. characters and um, but that phone call that I got from the director John Amiel was one of the best call yeah. the the best you know call other than when my wife called me at work and I was uh, uh, she was pregnant and she was like you need to come to the hospital now we're gonna have a baby and I was like oh my god that was when Emerson was born um, and to be able to drive from a job like that and go and like meet my daughter well, I was there. I made it. Um, she wasn't born until 1230 at night. But um, and I was trapped in traffic. And I took a video of it. Like, if I miss you, honey, this is right. why. Right. I, like, I threw my sunroof, you know, like. Uh, L.A. traffic. Yeah. 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 Um, but how awesome. So, I mean, I love what I do. I love this kind of stuff. I love working with your kids. Um, they're uh -huh. so, it's so much fun. And um, well, to they be love able to. Too. Oh, thank you. But, you know, to be able to work with you who I've known for. I know more I'm... than a more than a little bit. Uh, um, it's really yeah. neat, Jess. Like it's I know it's, I'm very grateful. Oh, well, we're grateful to you. And thank you for spending time with us. Can you just tell me one quick thing? What's a fun sure. fact about you that people don't know? Oh, boy. Um, a fun fact that people don't know. I. Um, I love my, the, the, my favorite thing to cook in the world is stuffed baked potatoes. That's all <laughs> I can think of. And I make the best double stuffed baked potatoes you ever had in your entire life. And my kids, it's like that. their favorite thing that I make. And it's just incredible. Um, I can probably come up with way better things. Um, probably. I'm throwing uh, it out there. It's a hard question. Yeah. I wouldn't know what to say. I'd be uh, like, um, uh, I don't know. know. <laughs> being six foot four, I'm also really tall. Being six foot four and an actor is yeah. a tough, the tough, tough. Yes, thing. being because um, you're so much taller than everybody else. That's right. So it yeah, is hard yeah. to match you up with Actors people. Actors are on Apple boxes a lot of time, which are like you know that much, oh and um, just so they can we can be in the same shot. It's not easy. Um, wow! But so they have look, to really look, like you to hire you. They have to really yes. want you. There are hurdles that I have to overcome. Mm -hmm. I also have I also have a not small nose, which uh, yes. hey, listen, it's a family trait. I it, I love it, <laughs> but um, you know, uh, um, I'm grateful for every job I get. I really am, and um, I hope I get to. I hope once this pandemic ends, life. And it, it seems like I, I can really feel the light at the end of the tunnel now. Um, yes. And we all deserve to get back to our lives. And obviously feeling yeah. very fortunate that I haven't lost anybody. I know so many people have and I, yeah. my heart goes out to them. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, I've been, the fact that I've been able to sort of survive in this career uh, through. It's unbelievable. You know, and yeah. then you've stuck with it. I mean, that's, I, I you know, yeah. I admire you. You know, you, you well, work all the time. You work that. regularly, thank which you. is a huge accomplishment in this business. Thank you, Jess. Um, but it's a tough business, too. And it's, it you know, a tough it, business. It's, when it's, you're a kid you know, and you're doing it, it's different because it's fun. You don't have to support a family. Right. But as you get older, right. then it becomes a little more stressful, right? It's um, a, yeah, it's a constant thing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate. Like I said, I have great, I have a great, great manager um uh and and agents um matt luber's my manager and um I, I have a lawyer and like my, my team is 
supportive of me no matter what. And even if I don't get a job and, and my, uh, I'm just, I'm very fortunate to work with the people that I get to work with. And, and that's something that I advise all actors is that's the one thing you have control over and you don't always have control over it, but you kind of choose the people that to surround you that, that you enjoy because you're going to be dealing with them ideally Mm -hmm. uh, for a very long time. And I just feel, you know, like everything's lined up for me when I go in for an audition, I've got everything I could ask for. It's just, being right, the right fit. Um, yep. I'll tell you one last thing. I auditioned okay. for Heather Graham had a TV show yeah. um, that lasted one episode, but I uh, chemistry read with her. Okay, so it was it was I, I had a chance at being you know her love interest for this show. Wow, wow! And um, I was really excited about it because you know she was a star and and. It was, this was a great network show, I thought. I, I, it read very funny and good to me. And um, just before I went in, I, her character's name, I'm forgetting, but we'll just call her uh, Rachel. So um, just before I go in, the casting director, what they do is they, they grab me, and they, they pull you in, they say, this is Benjamin King and whatever. Um, but she's like, she only wants to be referred to as Rachel her character's name. And I'm Nothing. Like, well, I wasn't even gonna, it's not like I was gonna say, hi, Heather. Right. I was gonna say, hi. Like, does that mean that I now have to say, Rachel? <laughs> uh, how am I so gonna weird. that in? And it right. totally threw me. And yeah. um, I think it was probably, you know, they wanted to see if you could handle a little bit of a curveball. Mm-hmm. And I got down and I said, it's nice to meet you, Rachel. And she started <laughs> laughing and everyone started laughing. It was just a joke. Just oh, they were pulling your leg. Yeah. That's hysterical. Yeah. yeah. I was, was like, totally... Heather Graham is a method actor? I know, right? I was like, seriously? Okay. Uh, I mean, she was great in Boogie Nights. Um, <laughs> but I don't, I, wow. Um, but I was totally thrown and I tanked the audition. Um, that one was on me. For sure. Yeah. That well, happens. I think they threw also, you. Also, don't beat yourself up if you have a bad. You know, but you're allowed to have a bad day. Right. You're allowed to have a bad audition. It's yeah. It's quite all right. Yep. Um And that's it's hard because we're you know we want approval. We're constantly right. seeking approval from people, right. um, from people to hire us and and actors. You know, we like attention. Yep. We like to get hired. We like the yeses. We don't like the noes. Right. Um, but. Uh, being able to walk away from an audition and really walk away from it takes yeah. some time. Give yourself that space uh, yeah. to learn how to do it because it's uh, it's it's an, an important art. lesson. It is yep. an art within an art. Um, yep. So I do have to get going, but Jeff, yeah, I me too. Adore you, and I thank you thank so much. You. And like I thank said, you so much for taking your time. You know, My I pleasure. really appreciate it. And Let's I know everybody again. here. Yes, absolutely. Because there's many more questions I have for you, like a million more. So we have to do well, it again. I, you, you set the date and let's, and let's do it. Okay. Awesome. Have a lovely night, Ben. Thank you. Or day. You You're too. still day on night. Okay. Yes, I'm day. But <laughs> All right. You too. Bye. 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 Thanks, Taconic guys. People. All right, Bye, Taconic. I don't even know how to log off here. I'll log off. <laughs> okay. Bye, Ben.